I'm John Buchanan, and in this video we're going to look at one of the biggest problems when it comes to mixing sounds in particular frequency areas. Now this video is what we could basically refer to, I suppose, as a kind of bass masking tutorial. What does that mean? Well, what we tend to find, particularly at the low end, is that frequencies get in the way of each other. In other words, if we've got a kick drum and a bass line, like my track does, what we need to do is to make sure that the low end frequencies aren't competing for space, because if they do, Mm. What we tend to get is a lot of mud in our mix. Let's have a bit of a listen to this. We're going to just listen to the track once through, and then I'm going to ask you to listen to one thing specifically, and we'll listen again. For now, just get yourself used to the little backing track we're going to be working with. Okay, so far, so straightforward. This time what I want you to do is I want you to listen specifically to the bass. And in particular, I want you to compare what happens on beats one and three of the bar when the kick drum and the bass happen together, compared to how the bass sounds the rest of the time when the two patterns aren't aligned. If I show you the MIDI, we can see that on beat one and on beat three, the kick happens at the same time as the bass. Everywhere else the bass plays, it's happening in the gaps between the kick drums. Listen again and tell me this time, well, you're not going to be able to tell me, but ask yourself, does it sound the same or does the bass feel compromised because the kick is happening at the same moment? Okay, you can tell me now, I'm listening. Yeah, it does, of course it does. Okay, so effectively the reason for that is because what we've got ultimately is our speaker trying to play sounds. And our speaker is responding to the frequency content we send to the stereo output bus. So in other words, every time a kick drum plays, the signal comes out of logic, it makes its way to our speakers or our headphones, and then there's obviously a physical response. The speaker cones have to actually respond to the frequency content we're asking them to play. And of course, a speaker therefore is going to be much more um, sort of fed data if it's got a kick drum and a bass line to try and play at the same time. And of course, what it's going to have to do is to compromise between those two things. So sometimes we make these absolutely wonderful bass sounds and we solo them and we hear them in isolation and they sound amazing. And then we mix them in with other sounds and suddenly they don't have the same punch or the same purpose. And the reason is because the physical playback of our sounds requires that definition to be carved into the sounds a little bit more. So bass masking literally means that the bass frequencies are being masked by other bass frequencies coming from other sounds. So what we need to do in a situation like this is to basically say to our sounds, okay, well, what exactly do I want you to be? Which frequencies do I want you to accentuate and play fully? And which other frequencies are we going to take out of other sounds in order to leave room for those frequencies in the first sound? Now, to show you what I mean by this, what I'm actually going to do is to slightly cheat and step out of logic world for a moment and I'm going to fire up the FabFilter Pro Q3 plugin. Now we're going to come back and look at this in Logic as well but this plugin is going to allow us to see exactly what I'm talking about really clearly. So I'm going to just instantiate that on the first sound here which is my kick drum. The Pro Q3 is obviously going to be an audio unit plugin and here it is and what I'm then going to do within the mixer is simply just drag that across, copy it onto the second channel so that we've got a version of it here on the second sound as well. So the bass is going to go over here and the kick is going to go over here. Now the reason why I'm using this particular uh, plugin is because it contains one really useful feature which is that the analyzer, in other words the frequency graph that it's showing when I press play and we can actually see the frequencies that are involved in each sound, can analyze not just the internal sound, but also another sound. In other words, I can take the kick and I can ask it to analyze the bass. And over here in the bass, what I can ask it to do is to analyze the kick. And the advantage of that is that we'll get to see where the frequency areas are, where we've got two sounds competing with each other. So 
So where these little glowing red areas sort of show up, effectively the Pro-Q3 is showing me that there is a sort of competition going on in those particular frequency areas that I might want to be aware of. And by addressing those, I've potentially got an opportunity to get around the kind of compromise that we've got within the sounds at the moment. So now the really important question suggests itself, which is, okay, well, do I want the kick to dominate in that frequency area or do I want the bass to do it? Well, I'm gonna prioritize the kick. Effectively, what I want to do is to say, okay, when the kick and the bass are happening together, the kick takes priority. I don't want to be compromising on that sound. So what that really means is that I'm going to go looking for a way to pull some of the frequency content out of those competing frequencies in the bass. So it's over here that I'm going to be focusing my efforts. Now, so to do that, what I'm going to do is to press play again, find out exactly what that frequency area is, and then what we can do is to begin to make an EQ cut. Now, when I do that, I can see that the sort of red glow over here on the left-hand side within the kick is less because suddenly by taking lots of volume out at this particular frequency, we don't have the same problem. We do have one problem though, which is that now the bass doesn't really sound like a bass. By itself, with this amount of volume drop, I've taken 12 dB out at one of its most active frequency areas. What we're gonna find is that the bass doesn't really sound like a bass anymore. Okay, so this has massively compromised that sound. So is this the way that I need to get around this problem? Well, no, I have identified the frequency that I want to target, but there are a couple of things that I could do now to make this much less extreme. The first of those is that I could make the active frequency area much smaller. So this is what we refer to as a much more surgical change. We've ended up with a much sort of narrower cut rather than taking lots of frequency um, content out, not just at the problem frequency, but um, effectively narrowing that down around um, sort of a, a smaller area of frequencies, then effectively, obviously, less of the bass sound is going to be compromised. And the other thing is I probably don't need to lose anywhere near that amount of volume. What I instead want to do is to basically just say, OK, bass, I just want you to just take a little bit of volume out of that particular space in order to prioritize it in the kick. And if I wanted to, what I could also do would be to say, OK, so I've got a frequency around sort of 57 hertz-ish here. So what I'm going to do is to come and find a similar frequency in uh, the kick drum, and what I could do would be to slightly boost it, effectively also sort of telling the, um, the, the speakers, if you like, that it's the kick that I want to be prioritizing. And again, sometimes only a one dB climb, something really small is enough just to give us a little bit of extra thump in that area. Now, of course, really what I need to do is to use my ears, but um, effectively what we're doing is we're beginning to use EQ to tell Logic exactly, um, exactly how we want to prioritize these two sounds. Now then, what I'm going to do is press play again. We'll just keep this, in fact, I'll come out of solo mode. We'll listen one more time. And this time what I'm going to do is to punch in the two EQs. I'm going to turn them off so we're not looking at them. It's much better to use our ears. So what I'll do is to start with them both bypassed and then we'll punch them in. Okay, now if you're listening on a laptop, that won't have made any difference to you at all. The frequencies that we're adjusting here are so low that they're not gonna be coming out of your laptop speakers and not gonna be coming out of a phone or an iPad either. So if you can, at some stage, watch that again on a nice big pair of speakers. But effectively what we're doing is we're saying, okay, we're asking one sound to be prioritized over another. We're giving it a little bit of extra volume and at the same frequency area, what we're doing is we're pulling frequencies out. And what we could do would be to keep going by saying, okay, well, if we compromise the bass a little bit by by basically asking for this cut, what we could potentially do would be to do the opposite a little bit higher up in the frequency spectrum. In other words, what we could do would be to say, okay, well, if the bass isn't gonna be quite as bassy, maybe what we could do would be to give it a bit of extra low mid-range and potentially pull out some um, of the sort of thump of the kick at that frequency again. Let's have another look.
Okay, so what I've done there is to select two slightly different frequencies, but they're close to each other. So effectively what I'm doing is saying, okay, well, I want the bass to be a little bit warmer here, just underneath 200 hertz. And what I'm doing to uh, sort of prepare for that is I'm scooping a few frequencies, a, few, a little bit of volume out, a little bit above 200 hertz in the kick. And again, it's a really subtle change, but effectively what we're doing is we're saying, okay, well, the bass can be a bit bolder in that area. And as a result, what we're gonna do is we're gonna balance the kick. And this kind of nice little sort of, okay, well, if I push one thing, I need to pull something else back approach going through this area is a really nice way to work. Now, what do you do if you don't have the Pro-Q3? Well, remember, we've just used that for analysis. That's all we've done, effectively, the idea of cutting and boosting at particular frequency areas and choosing how wide those bands are gonna be is something we can do in any EQ. So what we really need is an analyzer and an EQ. Well, we can do those things in logic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, get rid of the Pro-Q3. I'm gonna bypass those all together. We can keep them there for now. But what I'm gonna do is to do two, put two plugins in here instead. Firstly, what I'm gonna do is to come and find Logic's multimeter, which is here. And then what I'm also going to do is I'm gonna put in the um, channel EQ, which obviously I'm going to find within the uh, EQ section. And what I really want to do is to copy those two plugins across over here as well. So I'm gonna just put them in on the bass. And now effectively I've got those two stages of processing for both of these sounds as well. Here's my kick EQ and here's my analyzer. So when I press play, what we're gonna have a chance to do is to see which frequencies are active in this sound. And what I could do would be to put the um, analyzer for the bass up next to it. So if I um, don't own the Pro-Q3, then obviously I can put these side by side and I can just literally look at the frequency content that's coming through to find out exactly where the bass masking issues might lie. And I can see that, again, around sort of 62 hertz, which is what obviously we were discovering um, in the Pro-Q3 is where we've got our issue as well. So again, what I could do would be to quickly sort of uh, put in those changes again, sort of saying, okay, well, I know that my issue is around here and what I want to do is to then make that adjustment. But within the channel EQ, I need to be a little bit careful compared to working with the Pro-Q3. By default, this lowest frequency band here is what's referred to as a shelf. Now, what I was doing within the Pro-Q3 was to use a bell curve, in other words, I was basically saying, okay, this is the central frequency area that I want to adjust. I'm going to move my bell curve point to the middle of that. And then what I want to do is to scoop out a little bit of frequency content on either side of that area. And that's not what a shelf will do. If I drop this, what I'm effectively going to do is to not only adjust the frequency that I've targeted, but I'm gonna to continue to adjust frequencies below that all the way down as well. And that's not what I want to do. So what I'm gonna do is to reset that by simply holding down option and clicking on that curve. And instead what I'm gonna do is to come and find one of the bell curves, which is here. I can even move this one out of the way. I'm not using it. So again, we'll reset those values. And instead, what I'm gonna do is to move this down to the problem area, and I'm gonna drop this frequency. And if I want to make it narrower, well, I can do that right here. And of course, what I'm looking at as well is to look at the sort of dB drop, the volume drop that I want to apply. So at the moment, I reckon I'm at about two and a half decibels in terms of volume drop. But remember, this was the frequency that I was actually going to push in the kick drum at the same time as compromising on that a little bit within the bass sound in order to make sure that we're sort of creating space for it here instead. So I'm going to do exactly the same thing, move the orange band out of the way, come and find um, come and find the next band up, move it down to where I want it to go, create the drop here that I want, which again is going to be around two and a half dB. And again, I'm just going to make it a little bit narrower so that effectively we're making that more sort of surgical change that we were making before. So by using the um, multimeter and the EQ in combination, we've obviously got an opportunity to see which frequencies are competing with each other. And then we can make those changes with the channel EQ. Now, what tends to happen when we start producing records is that not only do we sort of get two sounds sorted, we then move on and we add other frequencies that are going to also compete at the bottom end. I'll show you what I mean. If I close down the EQ, at the moment, my track only consists of a kick drum and a bass. And if the next thing I wanted to do was to bring in a loop, well, that would sound like this. which is great, loads more energy, really exciting. If I solo it, the only problem is loads more bass.
So now I've got another four to the floor kick drum in addition to the one that I'm using up at the top. And again, my speakers are really struggling to decide which of those sounds is more of a priority. Well, I've already decided that this is gonna be my kick. So what I could do with this sound, instead of just EQing out the low end, instead, I could be a bit more bold. And instead, what I could do would be to filter it out. So this time, what I'm gonna do is to come down to Logic's auto filter and put it on this track. Now, in order to filter out the kick drum, I need what's called a high pass filter. I want high frequencies to pass through and to be heard. And I want to be filtering out low frequency content. So I'm selecting the high pass filter, which is doing exactly that. We can see from this slope that I'm gonna be losing low end frequency content. I don't want any envelope shaping. That's gonna start introducing an envelope into the way that the filter is gonna work. I don't want that. I'm just gonna get rid of that altogether. I just want a static filter. What cutoff frequency do I want to use? Well, you know by now, what we need to do is use our ears. Okay, so it's up to you to decide where you want the cutoff frequency um, to lie. At the moment, in this position, I've got absolutely no issue with frequency masking um, at this point, but I am losing a lot of the low end. And of course, this is a parameter that I could automate. So if I wanted to, for the really big section of my track, I could drop this down a little bit more so that effectively we're getting a little bit more of that base end, which is just gonna provide us with a little bit of reinforcement. But we already know that if I come all the way down in here and let all of it through, it's compromising the main kick drum. So there is no one answer to this question. But what we looked at within this video is the idea of bass masking. The problem that we have when lots of sounds are competing at the bottom end. And what we need to do is to prioritize them and work out which ones we want to really run the show. And for the other sounds, what we need to do is just be ever so slightly pairing them back to create more definition in the mix. And particularly when we're listening back on bigger speakers, when we've got an opportunity to really enjoy that bass, our mixes will really thank us for it.